Good morning and welcome to Mount Olive Lutheran Church. I'm Pastor Robert Craig and this is the third Sunday of Easter. Again, we're recording the service for you. Uh, the order of service is printed in full in your bulletins, which can be found in the link in the, com in the uh, description section. I'll also be announcing where in Lutheran service book the hymns and other uh, parts of the service are. The opening hymn today is hymn 737, Rejoice My Heart, Be Glad and Sing. Christ, 
have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Rise and join together in singing the intro and psalm printed in our bulletin.
humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Bread to your faithful people, rescue from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the third Sunday of Easter is from Ezekiel, chapter 34. For thus says the Lord God, Behold, I, I myself, will search for my sheep, and will seek them out, as a shepherd seeks out his flock, when he is among his sheep that have been scattered. So I will seek out my sheep, and I will rescue them from all places where they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness, and I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries, and will bring them into their own land, and I will feed them on the mountains of Israel, by the ravines, and in all the inhabited places of the country. I will feed them with good pasture, and on the mountain heights of Israel shall be their good grazing land. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and on rich pasture they shall feed on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I myself will make them lie down, declares the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strayed, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak, and the fat and the strong I shall destroy. I will feed them in justice. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm is Psalm 23. We try to sing it responsibly by holders. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall sin, 
and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed, for you were strained like sheep. But now have returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. During singing the Alleluia.
epistle reading, which is the base of my sermon this day. For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example, so that you might follow in his steps. He committed no sin, neither was the seed found in his mouth. When he was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten, but continued entrusting himself to him who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body on the tree, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you were strayed like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. It's a text. Dear Christian friends, this is, there are so many beautiful images in the service this morning. People often look forward to this particular day in the church here, this service, when we have so many great and beautiful images that are always appropriate for us, but even more so given what we have been going through in the past weeks. We need a leader. We need a shepherd. And today we are connected with the best shepherd, our good shepherd, Jesus Christ, the resurrected Savior, promised by God throughout the Old Testament. The Old Testament reading this morning was one of those great, clear, and specific passages, a promise that God himself would come and be our shepherd, a shepherd that feeds us, a shepherd that seeks out the lost and brings back the strayed. I, I myself will search for my sheep. As a shepherd seeks out his flock, so I will seek out my sheep. Of course, that image goes back be before the time that Ezekiel penned those words from the Lord. It goes even further back to David's beloved Psalm 23. The epistle points out that we are called upon to follow this shepherd as sheep follow their shepherd. And of course, Jesus is that good shepherd as he announced in the Gospel from John 10. Jesus lived out his life both as a sacrifice and to come and lay down his life for the sheep, but also to love us and by his love show us the way to God. Show us how we are to love each other and live in this world. Right before our epistle reading began, Peter had made a rather shocking point when he wrote in verse 20, For what credit is it if when you sin and are beaten for it you endure? But if when you do good and suffer for it you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. Wow, so Peter tells us that it's not only merely suffering that we are called to, because we frequently do deserve the suffering we face, and it's not really to our credit when we do that, but as Peter said in the previous verse to that, it is a gracious thing when mindful of God one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. Imagine that. Being ready and willing to suffer for doing what is right, and as willing to do that as to suffer for doing wrong. Peter points out the source of this. It comes from being, he says, mindful of God. You know, some people might suffer in that way because they are merely meek. They don't want to raise any issues or, or they want to be passive. But that's not what Peter is, is talking about here. In fact, what Peter tells us takes more strength. It takes more strength to control ourselves, to not respond in anger and in an attempt for justice for ourselves when we are treated unrighteously. But as Christians who follow our Good Shepherd, we know that God will feed us. He will care for us. And that confidence helps us to face whatever we do and whatever we face in this life. In a sense, the power of God's love controls us and overpowers any other emotions that we might experience. Jesus lives an example of love. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus said, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another just as just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. Jesus serves as an example for us in his way of life, in his sincerity, his humility, his calm confidence in God's ultimate justice. God will set all things to right. 
He's an example to us in his sinlessness, and of course, as I pointed out, an example to us in his patience, his patience under suffering, even suffering wrongly. An example to us in all these things, one that we strive to follow, but unfortunately, as we strive to follow that example, we find that we fail miserably over and over again, which is why Christ's love caused him to do what none of us could do, in fact, what no other human being since Adam and Eve could have done, and that was to be a sacrifice of love for other people. In fact, for every other person in the world throughout time. Peter points this out as well. For after describing the greatness of Jesus' example for us, he then goes and describes what, and speaks about what we must think about after considering Jesus' example to that sacrifice of Jesus. Because as our good shepherd, Jesus laid down his life for the sheep. He himself bore our sins. In fact, Jesus alone could carry that cross, and he did it alone for us. In his body. You know, God had prescribed sacrifices throughout all the Old Testament, but those sacrifices were prophetic images for this one true sacrifice of the Messiah. And he did it on that tree. Hanging on the tree was a curse, a place of agony and shame, of loneliness and rejection. But Christ did that for us. He did it for you. So that, as Peter goes on to say, that we might die to sin and live to righteousness. By his wounds, you have been healed. Healed. God dealt with sin in you and healed it. This is the same thing Paul pointed out in Romans chapter 6 where he was answering the critics who thought that, well, since God loves to forgive and we love to sin, we can keep on sinning so that God might go on forgiving. But there Paul responded, by no means. Let it never be. Our baptism into Christ connected us to Christ. We were united to him in his death so that we might also share in his resurrection to new life. We died to sin and have been raised to life and raised to live in a new life. And so Peter, Paul, and other New Testament authors say live in that life. Your wounds of sin have been healed by Jesus' own wounds, healed in his resurrection, that resurrection to which you have been connected in your baptism. Again, Peter points out, for you were straying like sheep, but have now returned to the shepherd and overseer of your souls. We have been brought back to Christ's fold, so let's stay there, remaining under his care and love and following his direction. Jesus is, as Peter points out, both the lamb sacrificed and the shepherd. And this is the song sung in heaven, as John had explained to him by the elder in heaven in his great vision, here from Revelation chapter 7, for the lamb in the midst of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of living water, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Jesus is that good shepherd, the one who lays down his life for the sheep, for us. He laid it down when he went to the cross and died for us and was raised again for us, for you. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We rise and join together in singing, or in speaking, confessing our Christian faith, in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried, he descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs.
for all who had been baptized at the still waters of the font, that they would remain in the great pastures of the holy church, where they want for nothing, and have their souls restored, as their good shepherd ever cares for their every spiritual need, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all pastors in Christ, especially Matthew, our synod president, Donald, our district president, and our circuit visitor, that through their preaching and teaching we would be led in paths of righteousness for the sake of Christ's name, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the members of this parish and all Christians everywhere, that we would receive strength to resist sin and temptation in our lives, fearing no evil, as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, knowing that our good shepherd is with us to heal and comfort us, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For a steadfast faith in Jesus Christ, a cheerful hope in his mercy, and a sincere love for God and neighbor, which disease and distance can never destroy, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those whom God has placed in authority over us, especially Donald, our president, Tim, our governor, and all who make, administer, and judge our laws, that they would be protected and work prudently in their response to the pandemic, serve with integrity and honor in all tasks, and seek the common good of all. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and suffering, for the lonely and unemployed, and for all who are in need of our prayers, that they would be well cared for and restored to health, and given grace to accept their time of tribulation with courage and hope, knowing that they always remain in their good shepherd's loving arms. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For goodness and mercy to follow us all the days of our lives, that we would, together with all the saints who have gone before us, dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, who laid down his life for us, and who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. The closing hymn in 740, I am Jesus, little Lamb. 